Okay, we are now going to continue with module 20. So we've added and subtracted complex numbers. Now we've got to multiply complex numbers. And this is a FOIL, right? Basic FOIL, it's the same exact idea. So we're going to do 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. 2 times positive 4i, which is positive 8i. Negative 2i times negative 5, which is positive 10i. Negative 2i times positive 4i, which is negative 8i squared. Okay. Now I can combine the two complex numbers together. So I have negative 10 plus 18i. But I also cannot leave i squared like that. I have to change it to its negative 1. i squared is equal to negative 1. We have to remember that. i is equal to square root of negative 1. i squared is equal to just negative 1. Okay. Once I do that, then this becomes positive 8, and then I can combine my real number parts. So negative 10 and positive 8 are going to combine to make negative 2. And as long as you have your real part in the front, and your imaginary part in the back, this is the final answer. You cannot combine them, they are not like terms at all. They're not even the same kind of number, right? So you cannot combine them. Dividing complex numbers, um, remember that i is a square root. So when you have square roots in the denominator, the strategy is to rationalize that denominator which means if this is square root of negative 1, then I need to multiply by square root of negative 1 at the bottom and the top in order to rationalize the denominator. So we don't use this form of the number, we use this form of the number. So I'm going to multiply by i and multiply by i in the top and in the bottom. In the top, you have two terms times one term, which means you have to distribute. So I get negative 2i plus 2i squared. At the bottom, you just have these two monomials to multiply, which gives you i squared. Remember, i squared is equal to negative 1, so you cannot keep it in that form. So then this becomes negative 2i minus 2 over negative 1. And if I simplify this, um, you can break up the fraction, but then that becomes positive 2i, and this becomes positive 2. And since it's over 1, you don't need to write the fraction anymore. This is almost it. I just have to have my real part in the front and my imaginary part in the back. And now I have my finder. Okay. Same thing here, when you have a square root at the bottom, but you have two terms, the strategy before was to multiply by the conjugant. So 1 minus 4i, top and bottom. So on the top, I still have a monomial times a binomial, which make a distribute. So I get 6 minus 24i. At the bottom, I have a binomial times a binomial, which makes me a foil. So 1 times 1, 1 times negative 4i, 4i times 1, and 4i times negative 4i is negative 16 squared. Now these two are opposite sign, so they will um, cancel out. So I have 6 minus 24i, and then 1 minus 16i squared. But we know that the i squared is negative 1. Which means that in the denominator, I really have 1 plus 16. Right? A negative times a negative will give me a positive. And so I have 16. But remember the form. They want us to write it as the real number first and then the imaginary numbers next. So we have to split up this fraction. It's 6 over 17 minus 24 over 17 with an i next to it. Okay, And now I have it in this form. A real number plus the coefficient times i. 
it just so happens that my coefficient of i is a fraction, okay? Um, and you would try to reduce these, but 6 over 17 does not reduce, and 24 over 17 does not reduce. Therefore, this is my final um, answer there. Same thing happens here. You square root at the bottom with two terms, so you have to multiply by the conjugate. It's the same two terms, opposite side in the middle, opposite sign in the middle. The only thing different with this problem is that you have the foil in the top and in the bottom. So we get negative 6, negative 6i, negative 6i, and negative 6i squared. Here we get 36 plus 36i minus 36i minus 36i squared. These do not cancel. They are the same sign, which means they need to be combined. Okay? We have negative 6, negative 12i, and remember, this is i squared. So what is it going to do? It's going to change that sign when I multiply them together, isn't it? So this actually is going to be a positive 6. At the bottom, these will cancel each other out because they are opposite signs. So I have 36, and then again, this i squared is going to change this sign. So it's going to become positive 36. Well now, the 6s are opposite signs, so those will cancel out. And I can reduce that number. It turns into negative 1, 6. So I have negative 1, 6 times i. And since there is no real number part, I don't need to write a real number part. You're not required to write this. Okay, although it is equivalent to that, right? If there's no real part here, the real part is zero. No real part. But when it's just the i all by itself, you can leave it like that. You don't have to write it like this. Okay, that concludes part two. We're going to go ahead and stop this and then continue with another video.